Hello, and welcome back to part two of my planet embroidery. For this Jupiter-like planet, I'm starting off with a satin stitch. I'm using three strands of a brown embroidery thread. And for the other stripes, I'm using a mix of browns, oranges, and yellows. As mentioned before, gas giant planets like Jupiter and Saturn are mostly made of hydrogen and helium, the same stuff stars are made of, with small amounts of heavier materials. About 2% of Jupiter is heavier elements. But Jupiter and Saturn don't have enough of these gases to reach the high pressures and temperatures needed for nuclear fusion to occur, a condition required for stars to be born. Jupiter would need to be about 75 times heavier to become a star. The other two giant planets, Uranus and Neptune, are ice giants since they contain more ices like water, ammonia and methane. When we look at the giant planets, we see the top layer of swirling clouds. On Jupiter, there are lighter and darker bands of colour and some circular or oval shaped clouds and storms. Most famous of which is the Great Red Spot, a storm that's been raging for at least 350 years. The Great Red Spot has varied in size and shape over the last few centuries. In the 1800s, it was three times bigger than it is now. It rotates in an anti-clockwise direction, like a whirlpool as do many of the other oval-shaped clouds on Jupiter and in the clouds on Saturn and Neptune. These swirling clouds are called vortices. Here, I'm using the back stitch with three strands of orange thread. Since different materials condense into liquids or solids at different temperatures and pressures, the top layers of Jupiter and Saturn are mainly made of ammonia and water ices. Below that we get the mostly hydrogen and helium atmosphere. The further towards the planet's core you go, the higher the temperature, pressure and density. For this line, I'm using a whipped backstitch with three strands of yellow thread. So deeper below the surface, the pressures and temperatures get high enough to squash the molecules close together, forming higher density hydrogen gas and eventually a liquid. It is theorised that at high enough pressures, hydrogen behaves like a metal and conducts electricity. So the gas giants may have a layer of metallic hydrogen. We don't know for sure what Jupiter's core is like. We probably will never know since no man-made machine will survive the extreme conditions. But since extreme pressures push molecules together and heavier materials tend to sink towards the centre of a planet due to gravity, Jupiter's core could be a solid or a very dense liquid. For this line, I'm using the split stitch with four strands of thread. Out of the four and a half thousand exoplanets discovered as of September 2021, 1,400 are gas giants. I've already mentioned a few gas giants. GJ504b, Dimidium, Galileo, Brahe and Lipehe. Since the discovery of planets far larger and more massive than Jupiter, 
the question of what is the upper limit of a planet came about. At a large enough mass, an object can fuse deuterium, which is a hydrogen molecule with a neutron, but isn't able to fuse regular hydrogen or helium, thus disqualifying it from being a star. But it isn't a planet either. These objects are called brown dwarf stars. Brown dwarfs aren't actually brown, but red, orange or magenta depending on their temperature. I've attempted to use the fish bone stitch, which is usually used for leaves. I had a messy start, so the beginning was cut out. I'm using two strands of rust coloured thread here. A rough upper limit for a planet is thought to be around 13 Jupiter masses. Objects bigger than this is likely a brown dwarf, but the line is fuzzy. It's difficult to determine whether an object is a very large gas giant or a brown dwarf. One example is TYC 8998761b, oof, that's a mouthful, which has a mass 14 times that of Jupiter. Interestingly enough, TYC 8998761b and C the other planet in the same system, also a large gas giant, were the first exoplanets to be directly imaged. I've posted a link in that description of that image if you're interested. For this line, I am once again using the whipped backstitch. I've briefly mentioned hot Jupiters, but for a time, their existence disrupted our understanding of how planets form. Gas giants form beyond the frost line of a new solar system, which is the distance from the young parent star where it is cold enough for compounds like water, ammonia and methane to exist in solid grains. This frost line marks the division between terrestrial planets and the giant planets, which we see in our own solar system. Hot Jupiters don't fit this model. How can a gas giant form so close to its star? There are a few theories. One is these planets were born beyond the frost line, but migrated inwards towards its star before settling into the orbit we now observe them in. Two is the gravity of another object perhaps a star passing by, disrupts the orbit of the planet, sends it into an eccentric orbit until it settles into a new orbit closer to its star. Here, I'm using the chain stitch with three strands of thread. Here are a couple of gas giants I find the most interesting. There's one called Kelt 9b, which orbits a massive blue star and is one of the hottest planets discovered so far. On its day side, temperatures reach four and a half thousand degrees C, which is so hot that molecules in its atmosphere have broken down into their individual atoms. WASP-12b is another hot Jupiter that orbits so close to its star, the tidal forces have made it egg-shaped and its atmosphere is being stripped away and consumed by its star. It's also one of the darkest planets we've ever found. 
it absorbs 94% of light that reaches it, giving it a black appearance. I've linked articles about these two in the description. This moon was a spur of the moment decision. I wanted to know what a woven wheel stitch would look like if I used just one strand of thread. So I've used seven straight stitches for the foundation instead of the usual five, so the wheel will be flatter. As of 2021, our solar system has 158 confirmed moons around planets and dwarf planets. The majority belong to Saturn and Jupiter. A moon is defined as a natural satellite that orbits around objects that aren't stars. Even some asteroids in our solar system have their own moons. The current theory as to how our moon formed is the giant impact hypothesis, which suggests that around four and a half billion years ago, when the solar system was in its infancy, a planet the size of Mars, which we call Thea, collided with the early Earth. The rock and dust that would have been ejected into orbit formed a disk of debris that eventually clumped together to form the moon. Other moons, especially that of Jupiter and Saturn, are thought to have fought, formed via co-accretion, which is a process similar to how the planets formed, and other giant impacts like the Earth-Moon system. Triton, Neptune's largest moon, is thought to be a dwarf planet that got caught in Neptune's gravity, since it orbits Neptune in the opposite direction to Neptune's rotation and is made of a similar material to Pluto. Since such a wide variety of moons exist in our system, surely exoplanets must have moons too. As of 2021, we haven't confirmed an exomoon discovery yet, but a promising candidate is Kepler 1625b, a gas giant planet 11 times the mass of Jupiter that may have a huge moon the size of Neptune based on observations by Hubble. Theoretically, moons this big and far away enough from their planet could have moons of their own, a sub-moon, or moon-moon, whichever you prefer. <laughs>